All right, the Wednesday edition of the Audible is on the air. Kimbo Camper, John Kajemi with you. We're in the uh, team auditorium. It's where the guys come in and... Uh, it's and empty. Get, it's where the guys come in and get yelled at after <laughs> watching game films or whatnot. Now, I used to hate going to these auditoriums because it was always... a. Uh, Ninety percent of the time, it was bad stuff coming to, coming I out. Start, of this I place. started getting I lower in my seat yeah. <laughs> when I got in. So here, when the yeah. projector goes, like, you know, here we go. This isn't going to be any fun. But no. uh, anyway, day before the uh, day before Thanksgiving. Uh, but if you're an NFL, John, uh, it's a work week. Uh, you it know, is. It's. it's uh, I, I I remember for you. It seemed like almost every year, someone says, "Oh, you got to work on Thanksgiving." I go, "Hey, you know what? It you're is in what football. It is. You know, th- Thanksgiving's usually a work day, but." Uh, I know the Dolphins will get a practice in early tomorrow. Uh, then they'll get a, a chance to go home and spend the rest of the day with their family and all that. John, what do you think? What, is, what are your recollections of uh, when was the last team played a, uh, played a game on, on Thanksgiving? You know, it's funny because in Canada, the Grey Cup week is Thanksgiving is it? for yeah. uh, the United States. So I played in two Grey Cups and both on this weekend yeah. coming up. So you're leading up to it, and naturally all the American players celebrate Thanksgiving at the hotel that we're at. Both were in British Columbia, yeah. so you're out with uh, your Canadian teammates and your friends and, and all the fans, and you, and you celebrate at the hotel. So you have that Thanksgiving meal at the hotel. So I got two experiences to play this weekend, but in, in Grey Cups, unfortunately, uh, didn't come out on the right, right end of them. But uh, you had uh, had a lot of... A lot of uh, interesting you, meals on Thanksgiving. Yeah. You never, um, you, you never, you guys didn't play high school uh, games on Thanksgiving. You know what? We played playoffs in yeah. Thanksgiving, so I probably did. I, yeah, you probably did. There was a, a tradition at St. Thomas. Yep. You'd come back and and you go on Thursdays, and a lot of guys that have played before you come out and give you a pep yep. talk and get get around the practice. And I remember doing that as a player, and then coming back to watch practice yep. when guys did. But so yeah, there was probably. Uh, two or three games that we played this weekend. Yeah. I think I've had um, probably three meals, maybe four meals, four of my Thanksgiving meals in press boxes when the Dolphins have played on, on, on Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving days. Uh, and I played one time on Thanksgiving Day. My It was technically my rookie. I came in in 1976, blew my knee out. I was on injured reserve all year. So in 1977, we played the then St. Louis Cardinals in St. Louis on uh, – on Thanksgiving Day, I'll give you my, my Thanksgiving. Was that the Dobler game? Yeah, it was a, it was a, I, I, it was, it was a, so here was a situation. We, we were kind of a, you know, n- you know, young football team. We started four rookies on, uh, on the defensive side of the ball. I think we started two rookies on the offensive side of the ball. So a young football team that was, that was still kind of in the shadow of that 72 right. team, you know. Some of those guys, Greasy was still playing. It's a long shadow. There were a lot of guys, you know, uh, Vern yeah. Denherter was still playing. There were a lot of guys on that 72 team that were still playing in that. But we were kind of a young team on, you know, trying to, trying to find our way around. And, and I remember there was, a, there was a writer for, it used to be the uh, newspaper in Hollywood, Florida, called the Hollywood Sun Tattler, yeah. a guy named Ed Playstead. And yeah. uh, we're playing the St. Louis Cardinals. They had Jim Hart. They had Terry Metcalf. Uh, they, they had a, a real good football team. And they were the hottest team in the NFL. I think they'd won five straight or something like that. He wrote an article the day before, uh, the day before Thanksgiving, saying that the Dolphins are going to be a, a turkey dinner for the St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> Why are they even bothering to go up there? And they drew. A, he, they had a, 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 a drawing in the newspaper of a turkey with about 12 different heads and all of our faces on the, on the head <laughs> like we're going to get slaughtered. So anyway, so we go up and play, uh, play the St. Louis uh, Cardinals. Greasy throws six touchdown passes, which was then an NFL record. Nat Moore caught three of the touchdown passes, and we beat him something like 52-8 to eight or 52-13. to 13. Something like this, but what went on, what transpired in that game, that made that game so unique. It was really the only, the only time I ever played on on a Thanksgiving day. So we, I talked. We had four rookies playing. It was me, Norris Thomas, Bob Baumhauer, and, and AJ Dewey, right. right? So the St. Louis offensive line was Dan Deardorf, right? Bob Young, who at the time was the strongest man in the mm-hmm. NFL. Tom Banks was a multi-time Pro Bowl center, and on the other guard was Conrad Dobler, the self-proclaimed and dirtiest and, player, and right? the, the dirtiest player. In the NASA. I think Sports Illustrated that year had done an article about the Conrad Dobler being the dirtiest, pl- dirtiest player in the National Football League, and he was. He was an asshole, right? But so, yeah, that's a good so, way of putting it. So we're playing, and, um, you know, and, and so we're beating them pretty good. And AJ's, AJ, is all, AJ always talked during the right. game. He can so talk I, to himself. So AJ's though, AJ. out there wide because they're behind, so all we're doing is rushing the passer half the time. <laughs> and uh, so AJ's out there. 
And he's going and, – and after every play, he would call into the middle and those guys would, hey, talking about Baumhauer, <laughs> hey, that rookie's kicking your ass. <laughs> that rookie's kicking your ass. After every single play, we'd come back to Huddle and Bob go, hey, Jay, shut the hell up, man. Shut the hell up. What's up? AJ's like, what, 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 what's up, man? What's up? He goes, man, every time you yell at him, they cart- – now they're Cutting double teaming me. him. They're triple teaming yeah. him. They're coming at his knees. They're taking – so they're taking out on Bob. Right. And he's going, so just shut the – They can't get the AJ. Shut the, they the F get up, the man. Just shut the F up. Just keep it quiet out there. You're out there all by yourself. I'm getting hammered in here. <laughs> Next play, hey, that rookie's kicking your ass again. <laughs> so all of a sudden, Vern Den Herter goes down, right? He goes down with a knee injury. And everyone thought Conrad took a cheap shot on him, which he did. But we weren't sure. And then about maybe in the third quarter, um, our middle linebacker at the time was a guy named Steve Toll. He went down with a knee injury, and they're dragging him off the field. And he says, bring me by the huddle. So they drag him by our huddle, right? His knee's like just trailing, my legs just tra- <laughs> dangling behind him. He goes, it was Dobler. And we go, oh, oh so God, he so gets somebody- hanging. So we had a guy on our team at the time named Wally Pursuit. He played at the University of Kentucky. I think he's at the I think he's at the University of Leavenworth or one of those places right now. <laughs> but he's playing both. with stripes. Now? Yes, he is. He's, <laughs> yes, he's, okay. So, so but he's an offensive lineman, right? <clears throat> and uh, big bearded guy, and and never played. He was a backup offensive lineman, so he never played on special teams. Get him. So he's just waiting to play. But every game, this was back this was back in the day. He would take like these greenies and stuff and get jacked. So he'd be foaming at the mouth on the sideline, never even got into a game, right? So all of a sudden, he, and his offensive guard. So we're we're sitting there, and all of a sudden on the defensive huddle, here comes Wally Pasuti in, right? So what's this guy? I go, well, what the hell's Wally coming in? We just call him Dirty Wally. What's Dirty Wally coming in here for? You know? <laughs> so Wally, so Wally comes and go, well, what the hell are you doing here? He goes, goes, he's gonna grind in his teeth. He's, he's um, supposed to get nobler. He goes, he goes. Shula wants me to line up over Dobler. We go, oh, shit, here it here comes. comes a fight. Here it comes. So, sure enough, <clears throat> first play, he lines up over Conrad Dobler. We're in a double zone. Ball snap. Jim Hart goes back to throw. I drop into my zone. So, I'm about settled about eight yards, settle down. All of a sudden, I look over, and Wally Pursuit has Conrad by the face mask, jerking it back and forth, going past me. Right? <laughs> right? He's, he's in deep he's, zone. He's, 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 in, yeah, he's in too deep. He's in the too deep area, right? He's playing so a robber in the middle of the bulldogs field. bulldogs him, throws him to the ground. I see it, so I turn I say, what the hell? So I take a run, I kind of cock him, boom, hit him on the way down, and the whole stadium erupts. Well, there's fights. <laughs> Everybody on our team was fighting on the field. Except for Bob Greasy and Gerald Yepremian, the only two that didn't, <laughs> the only two didn't run the field. Their oh, fights great. all over the field. I'm thinking Thanksgiving Day, everyone's at home, you know, everybody's eating, thankful pills. for Thanksgiving, right. and everything's going on. And meanwhile, you got this melee going on the field with everybody, and and everybody, everyone on both teams got fined. I think it was the most fined game at that point in the history of the NFL. But the funny thing was, the, the a couple of days later when we came back. We're watching the tape of the film. And so when it gets to the fight, obviously. Everybody's everyone sitting watched, up in their chair. Everyone's yeah. watching the fight. And, and the coaches have their, their, uh, the their pointers. And they're pointing to this skirmish and that skirmish and this. And then one of the coaches points. And he points to one guy. And it's our equipment manager, Danny Dow. You know, back in the day, it wasn't, it wasn't quite like it was now. You had limited equipment, you know. Right. Elbow pads and stuff like that. So he's got a sack. And he's running around, dodging fights, picking up all the, all the, equipment all the St. Louis equipment. <laughs> All their, like, all their the red extra, elbow pads. You all the their, extras. Picking up their stuff and throwing it in the field so, <laughs> so we can use it. But that was my, uh, that was my only experience playing uh, on, a, I on, have, on Thanksgiving. And, uh, I would have loved to have been in your mind when you saw Crazy Wally going backwards past <laughs> well, you. Well, as soon as he came in, you knew what was happening. Well, you knew that was going to happen. Was gonna happen. You figured it would happen on the line of scrimmage. But, but when, when, right? <laughs> yeah. You figured it was going to start gonna right, happen there. right there. It happened about 18 yards <laughs> deep in the secondary. But I'll, I'll never forget him. He had his, he had his you know, the, the big face, he's had it just gripping on it and just jerking it back. Conrad's ass is going back and forth and back and forth. Oh, God, it was, it was hilarious. Conrad, by the way, later on became a pretty good friend of mine. I did a few things with him and. uh uh, can't be, I, I remember we were doing an autograph thing at a Super Bowl one time, and uh, and Jim Kick was sitting here, I was sitting here, and Conrad was sitting there, and uh, Jim always used to sign his autograph. Jim Kick seventeen and zero came to me. I put Kim Bo Camper eight and eight, and then Conrad <laughs> would just sign his right. And so there's this kid comes and walks up to sign Conrad. And he goes, "Hey, you, you're Conrad Dobler." He goes, "Yeah." He goes, "You're the dirtiest player in the league." And Conrad goes, "Ah, you know." Ah. He goes, "Yeah, but you're the guy who used to bite everybody." Conrad goes, "God damn." 
He said, I bite one guy, all of a sudden I'm Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> so that was his kind of response. But that's that kind of wraps up the whole deal there with this. That's beautiful. But on Thanksgiving Day, everybody's it's a melee in St. Louis. That's it was great. Awesome. It was awesome. All right, let's get to the task at hand, John. Uh, uh, Dolphins, obviously regroup and practice today. Watch films on Monday. Uh, they'll work tomorrow morning. Uh, practice again Friday. Do a walk through Saturday. Head up to New England. And and John, this is a. Um, they have no choice. So they they got to win this football game. Yeah. I, I look the huge underdog. I think it's 17 points the last I saw. Uh, but if the Dolphins really want to keep you know keep their hopes alive in this season, uh, they're they're going to have to go out and pull off a, a stunning upset uh, against a New England team that's just they're they're just a machine, John. They, they don't change. Well, they change personnel a lot. But the results don't change very They don't much. lose a lot, Kim, obviously, and they don't lose at home a lot. So it's going to be a monumental task. The Miami Dolphins, as an organization, we haven't won up there since 2008. Yep. Uh, you're not going to win by beating yourselves, which yep. the Miami Dolphins did at home. Last week at Hard Rock Stadium, take no credit away from Tampa Bay, but yep. I don't believe that offense would have moved the football and gotten the points they were able to get had the offense not teed them up yep. in, in the situations where you have a – you know, more than less than half a field to, yep. to get your points. Uh, you know, the last drive in- included. You know, they, they moved the football a little bit there to win the game. But the Miami Dolphins, self-imposed penalties, uh, number one task yep. at hand. You, you cannot have uh, pre-snap penalties, which the Dolphins lead the league in. You can't have holding calls and interference yep. calls and, and phantom calls against you in some cases – where you're taking points off the board, yep. especially against a good team like the New England Patriots. So I think the Miami Dolphins have to take care of themselves first, yep. no matter how good their opponent is this week, and it's pretty good. If they can do that, they've got a chance to compete. Yep. If they don't do that, they don't have a chance. You look at the two games that really stick out in this football team, it's the Oakland Raiders and it's this, this game uh, this oh, last yeah. week um, against Tampa Bay where you basically shot yourself in foot. Raider game. It was way too many penalties that, that stopped drives or continued drives for them and really was the telling difference in that football game. And then for this game, it was the, the turnovers, four turnovers. You can count that. That fifth. last one, I don't count even that really. Last one. I don't even count yeah, that. The that game was, was all said and done BS at that point. There. So, you know, that, that doesn't go. But four turnovers, uh, you had 17 penalties, one short of a franchise record, 135 yards. And all those, and most of those penalties you talk about, Pre-snap, where now instead of first and ten, first it's and first 15. and fifteen, and then and then and that's almost insurmountable in this league. But to do it over and over again uh, is frustrating. And then, like you said, cer- certainly the you know taking the two points off the board on the safety, which I think everybody, I can't, believe I think everybody that just looked at that replay. If you can't, you've got to be the staunchest Tampa Bay fan to believe that was anything but a safety right. on that play. And I know the players can't say it, and the coaches can't we say can. it. But I can say it. That was a shitty call. Terrible on that. call. I mean, that was just a, a, a bad, bad call. And then I think also the uh, uh, the, the pass interference. Uh, on yeah, the pass Fasano, the and it, that, that was points off the board there yeah. as well. So, you know, you, you, count, you take that into account when you're going up against any opponent in the yeah. National Football League. You, you can't beat yourself with penalties. Yep. And, and penalties that take points off the board in a one-score game, those mean a lot. Yep. You know, and that, those wins and losses against Oakland and against Tampa Bay, you look at the schedule and you look at the overall records yep. in the AFC, there's only a couple of teams. There's three teams, if you want to take Pittsburgh, New England, yep. and Jacksonville out of the equation. Other than that, everybody almost, you know, other than Cleveland, right. have a chance yep. to get into the playoffs, yep. it seems like. Yep. so. Those are two games that you desperately needed. They're gone. You're at four wins. You have six losses. You have to find a way to start tallying up to eight or nine or ten wins. Yeah. You, in my opinion, you can only afford to win or lose one more game uh, yeah. throughout. So you have to be able to steal at least one, or you're hoping you sweep the Buffalo Bills. You have to at this point. Yeah. And, and you've got to get one against New England. You've got to yeah. find a way to get one. The one up there has, has been tough to yeah. find. And I think the Dolphins have to correct their, their mistakes in order to – to be able to play a clean game yeah. on Sunday. Yeah, and, and it's not, I mean, you look at you look at New England, five turnovers all year long, and you look at the Dolphins are negative nine. I know. Like, in, with, in the it's giveaway a- takeaway ratio, it's not good. Brady, I mean, New England will give up yards, but they're also points. number two in scoring defense, right? Points defense to me, which is the most. You know, if you're talking about defense, that's the most important stat to look at for Absolutely. any defensive team is the number of points you give up. Look at uh, Tom Brady. Is continues to be Tom Brady. Third down, he has a passer rating of 114 That's on amazing. third downs. This guy is just a machine back there. So you can't 
you know they're not going to beat themselves. Right. And so the Dolphins have to go up there and play an absolutely clean football game when it comes to penalties, when it comes to turning, all, turning the ball over, and they've got to find a way to play takeaway. And, look, the Dolphins at times have had some success up in New England, mainly in the first half of the game, and then New England usually comes out of the locker room and, and just comes steaming out after that. So, you know, but it's a team that you can't let them, you can't let them start running over you early in the game because they'll do it all night long. And, but if you can get if you can get Brady moving, if you can get him in with happy feet back there, th- then he's not the Tom Brady you see virtually every week. You don't see it much, but if you can get him moving in the pocket, get people near him, then he becomes a little bit human back there, and, and that's where your opportunity lies. I think you make a great point, Bo, about the way New England has been able to win at home against the Dolphins. It's not necessarily the first 30 minutes. The Dolphins have had the upper hand on yep. a number of occasions going into New England and being able to play toe-to-toe and sometimes ahead of the Patriots. Yep. It's the adjustments in the second half. It's the way Tom Brady plays in the second half, and it's the way that the Dolphins haven't been able to affect him for a full 60 minutes that lets New England off the hook, so to say, yeah. uh, so to speak, and, and gets New England into positive momentum. They, they either get a turnover, the Dolphins have a drop, the Dolphins don't convert a couple of third downs, it swings the momentum yeah. to the Patriots' side, and then they take advantage yeah. of it, like all good teams do. They find a way to take advantage of those opportunities. The Dolphins have to have the mindset that this is a 60-minute game, 30 minutes isn't good enough. 15 isn't good enough. They have to be able to turn it on from start to finish and play their most complete game of the season in order to win. Yeah, no doubt about it. And so it's going to take uh, a lot. Uh, Just one one, uh, bit of news from the Miami Dolphins. Nella Hewitt was on the Dolphins practice squad. He's been uh, promoted to the 53-man roster. Um, certainly that uh, kind of follows suit with uh, Ray Malaluga being right. uh, being let go. Chase Allen got the start next week. I'm assuming Chase is going to get the start again this week. A little surprised that Chase got the start uh, over Mike Hall? Not really. I think Chase gives you a lot of things yes. at the middle linebacker yeah. position. And I think Mike is so valuable on, on special, special teams yep. that you don't want to dilute that uh, that area. Yep. So you figure if it's even, let's, let's get Chase in the ball game, yep. get him some snaps. He's not going to hurt us on defense yep. and keep Mike fresh for the things that he does really well and that's run down and tackle and be a force on special teams and 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 especially this week when you're looking at all the the nicks and bumps and bruises the Miami Dolphins have coming in uh you know you have question in guard you have question as a result at tackle you have a question number one at quarterback you've got a lot of things that need to be resolved and that position of linebacker seems to to be worked out with yep. the addition of Neville, which will add on special yep. teams that will allow maybe those guys to share that position. Yep. And Chase is a, is a little bit bigger. A little length, uh, and, and, longer. And, and I think I think having Malaluga in there for the Gumballs, you, you saw the big body in yeah. there and the difference it made when stepping up into the into the hole. And that yeah. may be another reason why uh, they're giving Chase a little more of the opportunity. I think he's played pretty well I think uh, so when, whenever he's had the opportunity. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, bang out a couple of these questions along yeah. the way here. King Edlin on Periscope. Uh, Tis the season of giving. Have we seen the best of Jay Cutler and give the job to Matt Moore? You know, you know I think that's um, – I, I, I really think that's going to be an ongoing situation throughout the rest of this season. Now, I'm not sure what Jay's Cut- Jay Cutler's situation going through the concussion protocol yeah. is. Um, but if you listen to Adam Gaze, he said when Jay's healthy, he's our guy. Um, you look at Matt Moore, certainly came in – on Sunday against Tampa Bay, did it again. Lit him up, got yeah. you, got you, got put you in position to win that football game. Tied the game up at twenty late. Uh, you know, the the Bucks were able to go down the field and kick the field goal that ended the football game. But Matt certainly came in and did an admirable job. But we saw Matt Moore do an ab- admirable job against the Jets early in the season. Right. Then went up to Baltimore and it, it was, was just tough it, was, it was tough sledding. Yeah. Up there, so I think that's going to be a, I think that's going to be a, a dynamic that we're going to be looking at. Week in and week out, especially you got Jay now with a concussion situation for, for I believe the second time yeah. this year, and he's still dealing with those with that rib injury that that he dealt with. So, um, and then in the back of your mind, you say, Hey, is Matt better coming off the bench when when it's just an uh, an instant quick a quick turnaround and get going, or you know when he's got the start? And if you just based on what you've seen this year, better coming off the bench, right? Then we walked in as a starter. I, I just think that depending on where Jay Cutler falls in the concussion protocol, if he's not going to practice Wednesday or Thursday, I don't think he's going to play. Yeah. 
So I, I believe it's going to be Matt Moore that's going to get the start, uh, depending on how that plays yeah. out. And I think for Matt, you know, there are certain guys that are better coming off the bench halfway through, three quarters through a game, because you've seen them, you've seen what's working, what's not working. You've seen the tempo and what you need to add yeah. to a game. And at the start, maybe he just can't find things that that work really well yeah. in the offense. You know, the Dolphins haven't been able to run the football, so when you come into a game in the second half. The run's out the window if yep. you're down 20 to 7. You're coming out and you're trying to throw the football. If you get a couple runs, those are gifts. Yep. But really, you're going up-tempo. You're trying to throw the football. You're trying to gain explosive plays down the field. And he's been very good at yep. that coming off the bench. Well, so. well that, that's, he certainly brought that to the table Sunday. Yeah. I mean, all of a sudden, you saw the ball going downfield. Uh, you saw Kenny Stills with a couple. You saw Jarvis with a catch and run. Obviously, the, the touchdown to Kenny Stills. So, I, I think Matt tends to bring that. If he can stay upright, tends to bring that that deep ball into the game that we haven't seen much. So, but I think that's going to be something we'll just have to keep an eye on. Yeah, you got to uh, wait almost till Friday and, yeah. and see what happens there. Uh, Gary uh, from Facebook, uh, Corey uh, McWayne, uh, you think the Dolphins have a chance to win versus the Goat, which I'm uh, assuming is uh, Tom Brady, and the way the Pats' defense is playing right now? Well, this uh, you know the other thing about their their defense. They're such a disciplined defense. They, they play technique really well. If they've got an inside technique, they keep inside technique. Right. Got outside technique, they funnel you inside to, to where there's help. They just do a good job at the fundamentals of, of what they do. And, you know, that's a defense that forces turnovers. One guy, one guy holds you up. The other guy comes to yeah. strip the ball. They're always attacking the football when it's in the air. And, John, you always see them when they've got the two-deep zone. I mean, how many times you see a two-deep zone where the corner, the safety never gets there right. and the corner gets beat over the top where he's supposed to have help? New England seems to get that safety there when, when they need to. They, they get a hand on the football usually get a hand on the ball, on it. Or if the corner pops it up, uh, the, the safety's there to make a play on the ball. So, But doesn't it seem like they're very <laughs> – opportunistic on defense yes. uh, they play a, as a group uh, very well everybody's got a role yeah. and, and they don't get outside of their personality they don't step outside of what bill belichick and and matt patricia are right. asking them to do yeah so i i think that's that's the reason why they're so good you, you look at their talent you look at their names and you go well they're all right they're all right they're okay yeah. but they play always above their their pay grade. They yeah. always play above their talent, and then they've got a couple individuals that can make plays yeah. at the safety position, at defensive end, at linebacker on yeah. the outside. So you've got guys there that, that do make plays. Yeah. So I just think they're very good and very sound at what they do, yeah. and they stay in their roles, and it makes the, all 11 play as one. You know, I, I go back to, to watching, and I try to watch them to see what they do, and they're just, they're just a fundamentally sound football team no matter who they put in. And, and I'll give you an example. <clears throat> a few years ago we were up there. Different staff. A few years ago, we're up there, and I watch their their linebacker. They they uh, put a running back out in the slot. Right. Linebacker kicks out to to cover the running back. He takes a hard inside position on that running back, and running back tries to go inside. He stop. He, he gets in front of him, blocks him from taking the inside, forces him outside, and you know, and, and they throw the ball, and the guy's out of position. Right. Don't make a play. A couple series later, same situation left. They they get a running back. They put him out there. Our linebacker goes up there and stands head on to him, gives him a two-way go. Guy fakes one way, goes the other way, boom, cuts across the field, and they pick up a 15-yard gain. To me, that's, that's just being in a, posi- a pre-snap position right. to where you make it easy on yourself. Look, I'm going to take the inside away from you. I'm going to work you from inside to the outside of the field. Or if my responsibility is outside in, I'm going to take away the outside of the field from you, force you inside. Work you to the help. Where there's help. Work where the help yeah. is. And you can't give these guys two ways to go. But I think when – those are the little details that I think you look at when you see New England, and they do on a consistent basis, no matter who's in there, no matter who the who takes, you know, guy goes right. down, next guy next comes guy's up. Next guy's doing the same thing. May not be the best, better player, but you look at him, and, 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 he's, and he's fundamentally sound at what he does. You know why, Bo? Because if you're not fundamentally you're sound, you're not there anymore. You're not there no, anymore exactly. that next week. And and I don't really care who your name is on that nameplate. Yeah. They, they've sent guys, and I was having this conversation the other day, and New England and Pittsburgh and, and teams around the National Football yep. League that have had a lot of success, they've gotten rid of a lot of name yep. guys that you still feel like can give you something. Yep. But they've got a, a unique – feel for getting rid of their personnel yeah. at the right times and then getting another guy that mold a younger guy that molds into or morphs into yeah. what that guy previously had done for yeah. them. They, they, you know, they seem to be 
like from a business standpoint, you know, a good businessman knows, you know, when to buy a business, when to sell a business. Yeah. More importantly, when to sell, probably. And I think when you look at New England, that's when they, they, they know they know when to when to pick up a guy, but more importantly, they know when to get rid of a guy and not yeah. have that guy become, uh, you know, a, a, an anchor on the football team or yeah. something. So, uh, but hey, look, that's you know that's why they're out there are where they're that's at. That's right. A periscope question. We all agree that Matt, when Matt Moore comes in, a vibe resonates throughout the team. I think so. Look, Matt, when you can, look, I think the difference when you see Matt come in in a in a quick situation like that, you know, gets the guy, gets the guys to the line of scrimmage quickly, uh, gets the ball out of the pocket quickly, uh, and 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 he's got a little bit of that, you know, a little bit of that impromptu, like hey, you know, to turn this a little bit more inside, and 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 he'll throw the football, and 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 he likes to throw the ball down the field. Now, that being said, when he comes off the bench, he does that. As we saw earlier in Baltimore, did not work out so well, uh, you know, when he had a week to prepare and, and to become the starter, which is, you know, that, that may have been a, you know, that may have just been a little outlier for him. But uh, but, but certainly I, the, the more he plays, I think the more people understand what he's trying to do to you. I just think the Miami Dolphins have had trouble starting football games. They've yep. had slow starts. They haven't had explosive starts, needless to say. You just look at the points and look at the production. Look at third down. Yep. Look at all those things early in the first 30 minutes. They're not where the Miami Dolphins need to be to be a 500 team or better. So it doesn't matter who's at quarterback in the beginning of these games. They have to find ways yep. to get explosive plays. Now, you have a 69-yard run early in the game. You really don't get anything out of it. Yep. Uh, you have a couple explosive plays in the second half. You get points, and you're back in the football game. So the Miami Dolphins have to find a way to play with the lead. I know Adam Gase, the head coach, has talked about this yep. on a number of occasions the Dolphins have not had a chance to play with the lead to allow their defense to get into attack right. mode yep. instead of pre- prevent mode yep. or just hold up, you know, hold up long enough so the yep. offense gets on track. I think that's the biggest thing. You have to be able to start a lot quicker, find those explosive plays, and then finish and play with the lead. All three things tough to do against New England. No doubt. El Chapo Jr. chiming in. Best Thanksgiving game you watch from the press box or at home, John? Well, I – I don't know. I just think always that the snow game in, in Dallas, yeah, yeah. you know, with the Dolphins finding a way. And was that Leon Lett again? That was Leon Lett yeah. and Jeff Dellenbach, That's I think, right. was part of that uh, right. that whole deal there. I tell you, that, to me, I would say, you know what I would say? Any game that I saw where Barry Sanders was playing. Any yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> I always remember Thanksgiving. You know, Detroit was already always horrible. Yeah. But you came home and, you, and everyone's going, hey, man, I can't wait to get him. I want to watch Barry yeah, Sanders. I know. Because you knew he was going to do something great on Thanksgiving Day. I, it, it's, so, it's so wild. You, you just watch and you waited because at that time Detroit wasn't very good. No, right. So you're, you're looking at one player yep. and you could name probably ten quarterbacks that were his quarterback <laughs> yeah, right. on Thanksgiving for the Detroit Lions. So, they, yeah, that was pretty cool. But he was, a, he was an awesome guy. So, really, any, I, I went with you on that. The Leon Lett game would be number one. And then any game that Barry Sanders played on Thanksgiving yeah. was another one. Uh, let me see what we can get off to here. Uh, Christopher Dunkley on uh, from Facebook. Bo, I think the Dolphins need something like a turnover chain to motivate them. Any thoughts? Well, they need turnovers first. Yeah, we, we need <laughs> to be able to right forget now. the ensemble. Yeah, we, exactly. we need to get the, the paramount thing is turnovers. That's right. Yeah. You know, anytime you're negative in turnover ratio yeah. and penalties and and third down isn't isn't where you yeah. want it. You've got to be able to turn something around. The Dolphins, I think, Bo, the most important thing, turnovers are great, points are great. If you start fast and you cash in and you finish, you get some momentum early in a game. That's what the Dolphins need to do. I'm telling you what they need to do. If If they get a turnover, they just need to get Logan to come and jump around and hang around their neck. Until they go out on defense again, right? He's got Put some Logan ensemble. on there, just hanging Never around. They got that beard up there in the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, he's got the Logan beard. You know, he's got a, he's got a nice ensemble on when he wears Absolutely. and stuff, right? So he Logan could be the he could be the Dolphins turnover chain. What about Leon? <laughs> no, 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 no. Leon no. King, you don't you don't let they don't let him get close to the players. Leon, he, he's got. He's got a sort, that he's lately. got a sorted past. So I don't want to get into that, especially with all the all he's the things, playing with stripes all too. Things, all the things that are going on these days, I'm a I'm a Is stay Leon away. playing with stripes too. <laughs> I think so. Yes. yes. Um, Chris Blue from Facebook. Can Chase Allen get to Tom Brady? I don't know that Chase, Chase Allen's going to be doing a whole lot of. How about Cam Wake? How about, how about, you know, Cam how about Wake? Andre Branch and uh, yeah. Dominican Sue? Yeah. And from a blitz, I, I think from a blitzing standpoint, yeah. you're going to see Kiko blitz maybe. Maybe uh, uh, Lawrence Timmons every now and then, but I, I think Chase Allen probably going to be have his hands full with up or other somewhere else. Brandon Kennedy. So if up tempo works, why not start the game that way? You know, I, I don't have no problem starting with the. You know, the problem with the Dolphins and look, 
when 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 Adam Gaze came in here, he wanted to play an up tempo. He wanted to break the huddle quickly. He wanted to get didn't really want to play up. It wasn't so much about playing up tempo, breaking the line, breaking the huddle, getting the line getting ready quickly, and getting ready, to snap and getting ready. Right. But you you can't go up tempo if, if you're, you're three going and out. If you're three and out the first three times you get the football. By that point, you're you're now you're playing catch up. And you can't, so. I think execution is paramount yeah. early. The Dolphins have not executed well. They, you miss on first down. You yeah. get a negative play on second down. It's third and 12. Yeah. You're off the field. Yeah. You know, just last week, I think, was the first time with any consistency that the Dolphins were able to, to convert on third and nine, third and yeah. 10, and third and 11. And it happened a lot late yeah. in the game. I'm going to end it with this one, Bo. Can we put Leon in on special teams? I hear we would make a good gunner. Well, it's hard to be a good gunner when you run a six two forty, you know, running down the field there. Well, you have to be – not only that, you have to be on time. Yeah. You have to – you know, they call special teams. They yeah. call punt cover. Where's Leon? we got ten guys. Let me see. I'm trying to think. Leon versus – I was going to say Jordan Phillips, but Jordan Phillips is a pretty good athlete. I'm you, Okay, I'm going to say – Yeah, I'm going to say Leon versus Ted Larson. Leon in 40 yards – Leon finishes three yards behind Ted Larson. Well, that's generous. <laughs> I, I think that's generous. I think, I think because at, at the twenty-eight yard line, you get the pull of the hand. Pulls up. Leon pulls up, and then yeah. you kind of. But that's you, you know, don't he, get to the but finish line. He pulls line. up because he knows he's already too far well, it's behind. Already, three, he's already no got the three lengths, go, right? right? That's yeah. it. All that's right, that's going to do it for the Audible today, John. Always a pleasure, hey, man. Happy thanks, Thanksgiving buddy. To Happy Thanksgiving. Happy to you Thanksgiving too. to all the staff here for the Audible doing a good job each and every time we come on here. And thanksgiving to you, the fans that, uh, that uh, continue to follow us on the Audible uh, each and every day. I always appreciate you being with us. Hope you have a great Thanksgiving, and we'll be back on Friday. Take care.